Monique has instructed me to head for the hills in search of a mountain goat. And of course, she expects me to hunt it myself. Under the watchful eye of guide Dan Russell. Introduced to New Zealand in the 18th century, goats are an invasive species. And with no natural predators, they've caused untold damage to native vegetation. How decimated had the land become because of the goats? Are they destroying that much? They're all pests. 15 years ago, they were right out of control. And we need to control them because New Zealand wasn't built to have all these animals here. Yeah. The Maori have always sought to live in harmony with their environment. Hunting invasive species may be one way for modern day Kiwis to help redress the balance. And the best side of it, you get to take food home that you've sourced yourself. Sure. Cook it up and be proud of it. Yeah, that's the important part. Beautiful big free range guy. Yeah. The size of him. He knows we're here. So I want to get sort of a bit of a level mound. If we go through the brush, there's going to be nowhere for you to lay down and get a shot. No. We'll sneak up and just yeah. put eyes on them. Sure. I'm hoping that when we get around this ridge another 200 yards, we'll be in shootable range. Sure enough, just beyond the ridge, I see it just here. We spot two more goats. I'm trying to get a closer. He's looking over. Don't it's need to see you. I need to act fast, but we're on uneven ground, making my shot extremely difficult. Dig that knee in, dig your elbow into that leg. They're onto us, but give it a... So close the bolt. Oh, it's just safety off. Close. Yep, safety's off. Thank you. Just take your time. How steady can you hold there? Yeah. Yeah, I want him now. You reckon you can shoot it like that? Yeah, I want him now. The green light to shoot if we can. I'm hunting wild mountain goats high up in New Zealand's Southern Alps. There you go, there's your shot there. Got to tight into your shoulder. Are we good to shoot? Like that? Yeah, I want him now. Oh, you're right, take your time, they're not panicking. Good work. Good shooting. Yeah, it's a lot harder when you're balancing on your knee as opposed Very to laying hard. down. And I don't normally like doing that shot, but we had no other option here, no. and they're onto us. And there's no flat ground here, is there? I had confidence you were going to hit him. Yeah, the heart's beating like Big Ben. I mean, your adrenaline is pumping. It's windy, we're on the edge of the cliff, and the hard thing was taking the shot on your knee as opposed to laying flat and being, you know, 100% accurate, but... You have that split second, and you're down that barrel, and it's in your sight. You've got to take the shot. This is not wrapped up in clean film and stacked on a shelf in a supermarket. This is proper outdoor wild hunting. Monique stipulated, you know, get into the mountains, understand what we live off. And I'm happy that goat is big enough now for both of us to share, and it's definitely going to be the centerpiece for our cook. It's my final day in New Zealand, and I'm back on Stewart Island. Big day today. It's time to put everything I've learned into practice. So, a little bit nervous because I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Tonight, I'll serve a Maori inspired feast to a group of elders with my kick ass mentor, Monique. Gordon. I survived. Oh, you survived? Oh, my lord. You good? Oh, I'm excellent. Let's just hope this cook goes to plan. If not, Monique's going to have my balls in a vice. What do you got? So I've got my herbs, uh, I've got the goats, I've got the power. Should I light the fire? Not yet. Go on. First, we need to dig the pit. The pit? The pit. Right. Then we've got to light the fire, heat these rocks until they're glowing red. Then we're going to put our food in the ground. Then we're going to wait a few hours. Then we're going to dig it back out as if it wasn't painful enough to dig the hole in the first place. And then we'll serve the food. Why a pit? Because this is how we do it. We're doing a hungi. How far down? Two feet. Stop it. I'm not kidding. Dating back to their ancestors in Polynesia a thousand years ago. <laughs> this is crazy. The hanging is a traditional Maori method of cooking food in so, the ground. You've got an earling. 
Yeah. You've gone goat hunting. Yeah. You've gone diving. Yeah. You've gone into the forest. You've discovered all these amazing things about New Zealand. Are you ready for tonight? To be honest, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. Now that I'm digging a pit to cook my goat in, you didn't tell me at the beginning of the week that we're going to be digging a hole and cooking in a pit. I always like to leave a few surprises. Confident? Yes. Oh, that was... <laughs> One hour of hard labour later, we're ready for stage two. We are flaming, girl. This is going to burn for two hours, so in the meantime, we'll get all our stuff ready to put in the pit. Time to get cooking, starting with my mountain goat and those fiery leaves we foraged from the forest. Right, Monique, uh, what are you rubbing your uh, goat with? The... Jalapeno. You using jalapeno on yours? Yes. Me too. Nice and spicy. Nice and spicy. That's going to be the pepper flavour in there as well, right? That's right. In my kitchens, I use foil to wrap meat, but that's not the Maori way. All right, no tin foil, no worries. We're using puka leaves. Do we wrap veins inside or outside? Uh, inside. To stop the meat drying out during cooking. And harakiki flax to tie them together. That's one done. I mean, it's a little bit prehistoric, but it's done. Right, next one. I'm gonna check this right Oh, oh, I think it's coming undone, Chef. Not tight enough. I know you might want to start again. Bloody house bells. It looks easy tying these things, but it's not, you know that. Just like your shoelace, Gordon. Right. I'm sure your kids could do it. Holy mackerel. Fragrant and highly strung, and that's just me. A goat goes into baskets lined with aromatic herbs. The sweet potatoes in as well. Sweet potatoes in, and we'll just put them in the gaps. Oh, man. Heavy, huh? Yeah. So, too, are the now red hot rocks. How hot is that? Must be 1,000 degrees. All right, we're almost there. Now let's get the food on. Like that. Next, the pit is covered with soaking sacks to create a primitive pressure cooker. And then... Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, this That's thing. the steam starting. If you weren't sick of your shovel... Finally, because I haven't been punished enough already, more Fuck shoveling. Yeah. I've met some hard workers in my time, but Monique is on another level. If there's ever a cook that complains about the stove, I'm sending him to you. What an amazing technique, an underground oven. There's no cavity wall insulation, there's no digital clock to set the time. <laughs> there's no convection. You've got a hole, baby. We'll soon find out. While Monique pounds those gross grubs into a pulp, to make a creamy sauce, I crack on with my next dish, with another ingredient from my travels. One of the dishes that I'm super excited about is the eel, because getting those things was incredible. So I'm just going to grill this with a little ginger Cherokee glaze. Manuka honey, how exciting is that? Next, I'm going back to the fuchsia to make a chutney to accompany the goat with those beautiful berries I picked from the top of the tree. So I've caramelised the garlic, shallots and ginger, a little bit of raw cane sugar with some butter. I'm going to use the peppery jalapeno leaves and then I'll drop the berries in. You want to try the hoo-hoos? May I? Go for it. See, now the taste of peanut. Exactly. See? How can it be so delicious coming from that disgusting, rubbery bug? At the risk of sounding like an animal undertaker. Is that going to be ready? Looks ready to me. It's now been three agonizing hours since we buried our goat. That smell is incredible. It's almost like we've opened the oven door. Two, three. three. And again. Three. The heat coming out of there. There we go. The question is is the goat goat? Oh, my God. Seriously. 
Lamb, it's almost time to serve our Maori feast. Our honored guests are arriving. They may have mixed ancestry, but make no mistake, they take their Maori heritage very seriously, especially when it comes to food. Wait, are you still cooking? Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna be super quick, okay? Literally 30 seconds, please. With kings of the ocean, Zane and Fluff at the table, I'd be thrown to the sharks if I didn't cook them some hand-dyed power. Oh, God. Soon if we don't hurry up. That was just tenderizing the power, by the way. Come on, come on, hustle. I'll be 30 seconds, I promise. Literally 30 seconds. Guess staring at us. Are they? Need to move, need to move. I know, I know, I know. Right, coming out the pan in five seconds. Five. Four, yeah, hold on, my three, two, one. I am ready. Alongside my pan fried power, my goat with fuchsia berry chutney, and with my teriyaki glazed eel, I'm serving a raw salad of wild forest herbs. To accompany her goat, Monique's made her signature hoo-hoo grub sauce, Mary potato flatbreads, and hangy steam pudding. Mm. <laughs> What a day, and when you experience cooking like that for the first time, it becomes even more special, because it's special ingredients for special people with a special young chef, and then the uniqueness of it, because you start with those raw ingredients that are hand-sourced, and then you stick them in the ground, then all of a sudden, this whole thing comes to life, and you start taking in this culture that has been a tradition for, for centuries. The question is, have I done it justice? I've never been so nervous putting something into a hole and waiting three and a half hours for it to cook <laughs> because I'm a control freak. So, did I pass the test? Yes. 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 <laughs> Everything is superb. The goat with the sauce on it, that, that's mm. incredible. That. Yeah. And the power is to die for. The yeah. deal was just yeah. really good. It's probably just been a highlight. <laughs> Gordon did an awesome job. He's picked up a lot in a really short time about mouldy ingredients and mouldy cooking techniques. I didn't think a Brit would pick up our way of doing things so fast, but he's impressed me a lot. Spending this week with Monique has been amazing because in many ways she reminds me of myself at 31. The difference between her and I is that I was trained in a modern European style and she's trained in a Maori style and this connect together has been a wonderful lesson. Fluff, apart from half the food in your beard, <laughs> you're, saving, you're saving that for later. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favourite part? Uh, it was nice and thin. When the uh, tohu grab sauce on looks really nice. If you're ever in London, <laughs> you're more welcome to come and join me at my restaurant for dinner. I definitely will. Okay. <laughs> Here in New Zealand, I've discovered unique ingredients. Wow. That's delicious. And learnt ingenious cooking methods. So that will burn, that will steam. Yeah. Which deserve to rival some of the finest food on the planet. It's almost like a sacred cuisine, and they have every reason to be overconfident, but no, they take the opposite route because I think deep down inside the Maoris don't want this secret out there. But they've inspired me, and I'll carry this inspiration with me wherever I go.